AEW Rampage, the fastest hour in pro wrestling. I'm sure it'll be your tagline at some point. Look, I love the thought of having a one-hour wrestling show. There's just too much wrestling to go around. There absolutely is. Just too much to watch, too much to keep up with. Especially when you think about reality is any of these coming down here, who the hell you are. And what you like. This shit ain't good enough to devote that much of your life to it. It is not. So when you get a chance with a one hour show, especially off of what's happened so far with Rampage the first two weeks, like, you would want to put as much as you could into it, you would think. Like, you've got this show. Find the talents that you should be featuring that you want to feature and feature them well. They did not do that this week. This show was senseless. It was stupid. It was dumb. It was bad. It really was. And I know a lot of people are going to sit there and say, well, Lucha Brothers vs. Jurassic Express was an outstanding opener. No, the really fuck it wasn't. It was cool seeing the Greek freak you know, ringside, feel bad for anybody sitting in the second or third row behind his seven-foot ass. But it was cool to see him marking out. It was cool to see him, you know, acting like it's a big deal. You probably should have had him doing something similar on Dynamite Wednesday night when he was backstage. You know what I mean? But nonetheless, Lucha Brothers Jurassic Express is dumb on so many different levels. This is the type of match that... It's far too common in wrestling today. Everybody's trying to get their shit in. A good number of the shit doesn't make any damn sense. It looks stupid. It's botchy, sloppy, and all that other crap. But because they did so many spins or X number of flips, and Dave Meltzer's told you for years that that's the way wrestling's supposed to be, a lot of you clowns have lowered your standards to the point where you think this shit is good. It's not. And by God... I've never seen a company defend such a one-dimensional talent to the level that AEW has with fucking Jungle Boy. Like, this is even going above and beyond how WWE used to protect Randy Orton from himself by not putting a live microphone in front of his hand in mouth because he didn't know what the fuck to do in a promo or an interview. Good Lord. Like, they always tried to give him shine... Never have him eating the pinfall for his damn team, even though his teammate is freaking six foot five, two hundred and seventy pounds. But yet they never do anything with fucking Jungle Boy either. What the hell are you protecting him for if you're not gonna put a damn strap on him? And I look at this decision in the fucking cage match at all out in part because of what happened between the Bucks and the Jurassic Express in their last match? Like, doesn't that tie into their story? And you went with the fucking Lucha Bros here? Who's booking this shit? Is it Dave Meltzer? It's gotta be. Because I look at this match as a perfect personification of a problem with professional wrestling and the Meltzer Magoo mindset. If you're looking to grow your audience, expand your reach, expand your scope, Bring in new fans. Be as cool and as popular as you possibly can be. You put over the Jurassic Express. And you have them go win the fucking tag straps from the Young Bucks at All Out. You've got a young man whose dad, a lot of people know, as Luke Perry. There's a story in and of itself. Then you've got some well-educated, six foot five, 270 pound fucking dinosaur in a mask! You've had Reggie Miller referencing him on frickin' NBA broadcast, like you look at them and you say, this is the type of stuff that appeals to casual and mainstream fans. And if you have any business brains at all, that's the team that you're pushing. But no, if you're a Meltzer Magoo match and move, Mark, you're going to put over the fucking Lucha Bros because you want them to flip and kick into flaming shards of ass glass off of the steel cage and fucking all out. Somebody's going to sit there and do a triple gradunzel on top of their fucking head and then no-sell that shit and kick out it too. Stop only appealing to your in-the-know audience. You've got a chance here to grow your brand, to get more people to watch, to get more people in the key demo to watch. 
which means ding dong dum dicks, you can make more money! You don't do that with the frickin' Lucha Bros, no offense. You do that with the goddamn team where the one dude is the son of Luke Perry and the other dude is a fucking six foot five mass dinosaur! God, that was frickin' senseless and stupid. And then you're promoting like CM Punk and Darby Allen and it's a video package, which, you know, that, that is whatever, but, you know, some people probably assume that Punk was actually going to appear if they didn't read spoilers. Um, well done video packages, mind you, but fans probably wanted a little bit more. You have Miro unmasking Fuego del Sol, which is whatever, to have Eddie Kingston come out and I'm like, oh, he's going to dress him down on the mic and maybe we'll have a mic battle here. No, it was going to be this kind of crappy battle. Eddie Kingston says, fuck the mic, I'm going to go in there and yoke up Miro and then he gets yoked up and then it looks crappy. Like I said, this was a senseless and stupid show. It really was. Like, who the hell's idea was it to put the bunny and Ty Conti on the same show? Like, Conti actually has potential. Conti can be good. Conti can be somebody you make some money with. The bunny, no offense, you ain't fucking doing that. And when you look at this damn match, it was sloppy. And then you've got bullshit. You've got brass knucks. The crowd didn't fucking like it. Like, if the crowd wasn't already dead before, they were dead at this point. This is stupid. You've got an hour every week. One hour. And this isn't like Dark or Elevation, these other shows where you can let people ply their craft and practice. You're getting them some real-world in-ring training. These are the major league shows you're talking about here. Dynamite on Wednesday night is two hours of prime time on TNT. Here, Friday night, 10 p.m., a still somewhat primetime slot. You've got an hour. Man, you better treat that hour like it's fucking gold. And when you're sitting there and having the bunny take on Tay Conti, that's not treating it like it's fucking gold. That's stupid. And then to do some all elite circle jerk bullshit as the main event, Kenny Omega and Brandon Cutler versus Christian Cage and Frankie Kazarian. Are you fucking serious? Somebody thought it was a great idea in the main event of this show to prominently feature guys like Brandon Cutler and Michael Nakazawa? Who's fucking this crap? This is what happens sometimes when you got the boys booking themselves. This is stupid. The crowd was dead for this. They really didn't care. It even seems like AEW didn't even really care because, you know, this was a taped episode, so they could have pumped in some canned heat. They ain't even bothered to do that because they knew this was crap. There was nothing on this show, in my opinion, that made you want to tune into Rampage next week. There was nothing on this show that should have realistically made you more excited to go watch by All Out on September 5th. Now, some of you I know are going to talk about Lucha Bros and frickin' Young Bucks, but yeah, yeah. That's because you're just sucked in by all the moves and the flips and the no-selling and the false finish non-storytelling bullshit. Because you don't care whether or not AEW grows and expands their audience. You're selfish. You want it to be for you and people like you and then that's it. Which is not how AEW, Tony Khan respectfully, should be running their damn business. You should be wanting to draw in as many fans as you can. No, it does not mean you sit there and take everything from the WWE playbook and you just try to be the Jacksonville version of WWE. No. You have your own brand, you have your own identity, and you do your own thing. But you can certainly learn from other companies of the past that actually had major mainstream exposure, mainstream appeal, pop culture impact, and take some of those elements, put your own spin on it, and incorporate it. Sam Punk's the most important thing you've got on your brand right now. And you threw in a little video package. That's it. You've got a tag team that's got a ton of momentum. The fans get behind. So you put over the Lucha Bros instead. That's stupid. Miro's your damn TNT champion. But it's a short, quick thing. And that didn't look very good either. The one women's match you chose to feature this week... Involves one of the combatants being the bunny. The bunny. 
This feels like you got random Penelope Ford sightings and shit. Like, what the hell's going on here? Put Jade Cargill in another match. Put Dr. Britt Baker on. Give her another match. So many things you could have done. And you did this dumb match instead. The main event was a wet fart. The crowd didn't care, nor should they have. Now, come on, you got an hour every Friday night. If you're going to be asking people to stay from 10 to 11 Eastern, watch your shit. Then you need to give them something better than this, AEW. It's ridiculous, man. Ridiculous. Sometimes you're just going to have that. Like I said, the first two episodes of Rampage I enjoyed. Especially the first one. First one was great. Second one obviously had the big moment with CM Punk, and you know, after that really didn't matter much, but it was still okay. I mean But this this was bad. This was not good. And we shouldn't even be sitting there pumping up that opening match saying, Oh, they didn't mean you've been the opener. No. The opening match was dumb because we've dropped our standards so much in professional wrestling today. It doesn't matter if the moves look any good or not. As long as you do moves, then that's all that matters. It doesn't matter if the moves are well executed or not, because again, you just did moves. It doesn't matter if they make any sense or look halfway decent. You don't care if they make it look like imbecilic asshole behavior by sitting there doing dumb fuck just because they can, because everybody's got to get their shit in. Like, that's not good. And then putting the wrong team over, seemingly to just appease you know, a certain segment of your audience when you should be trying to grow your audience. Like, I mean, seriously, look at this show and say, you look at the numbers for Rampage last week, they were pretty good. You look at the numbers for Dynamite on Wednesday, solid, good. I believe it was second most watched Dynamite episode of the year. So again, a little bit of momentum there. It's not landscape changing, but it's something to build off of. If anything, that means that you've got to really focus and hone in here on this one hour you've got every Friday night. I don't know if it's a consequence of you have the problem of too many people on the roster, so you're trying to get everybody some tick. No, you don't need to give everybody some tick. That's what you got the dark and elevation, whatever the hell shows for. You need to pick your spots better. You need to pick your talents better. You need to pick your stories better. You need to pick your potential matchups better. You need to do everything better compared to what the hell you did with this week's show because it sucked. 